35. Normally we would have crossed Lake Ontario in June of 2020, but because of COVID-19 and the border being shut down and just not being a great time to plan a big adventure, we decided to postpone that paddle. And, you know, we wanted to keep our momentum going. Each lake we've raised more and more money and more and more awareness for these bodies of water. Our organization is growing exponentially and we decided to take on the chain of lakes. We are at the new kiosk, six mile lake, gearing up here. <laughs> Got this beautiful lake. Boom. We're starting right here. Paddling all this. Oh man, T minus one minute. Man, that's a great shot of you. <laughs> we are off, most of us. <laughs> Grant, it's this way. So this is a paddle that I've always wanted to do because I grew up in the area and spent a, a ton of time on, on Torch Lake, Torch River, Skigamog, and Elk. Looking at some sunrise action with the paddlers. We have Grant peering up in the front left. We have Joe Short just in front of me. Jeff Guy in the middle. We have Joe Lorenz over here. And we have me. I don't know if you can see me, but been an awesome start so far. And it was just a gorgeous morning. Uh, no wind, a little bit of fog. It was just starting to see a little daylight poke its way on the horizon. Man, what a beautiful morning here. Saw a beaver. Oh, beaver. <laughs> Things are good, spirits are high. Um, everything's on time so far. So far, so good. That's what we just paddled. It was pure calm and fish were jumping and there was a kind of a fog rising off the water. As we were leaving St. Clair River and heading to Ellsworth Lake, we had a pretty tight culver to go under. We all have our own personalities and it kind of shows as we're going under. We have Jeff Guy going first, clearing all the spider webs for us in the face. Next we have Dancing Joe Short with his hat to match his spunky personality. Next we have myself with a big smile, loving the adventure and feeling alive and feeling just grateful doing stuff for the environment that's meaningful. Then we have the stoic videographer Grant Peering who decided to join us last minute and really crushed the crossing, crushed this paddle. And lastly, we have Joe Lorenz, who's almost looking like he's doing yoga underneath, comes out, big smile on his face, and it, just a positive experience for all of us. Around the town of Ellsworth, we had some kayakers join us from Paddle Antrim, which was a really cool organization that we were raising money for on this paddle. So we almost had, it, had some guides for the northern chain. People are starting to join in, which is great. Awesome. Good morning, good morning. People watching us and people joining us the entire time, which was so amazing to see. One of my favorite things about the Chain of Lakes is, is to think that we paddled all day and on all these amazing rivers and streams and lakes and crystal clear waters and sandbars. And seeing all the people that make this place so special. We 
paddled the next two lakes with Paddle Antrim, the organization that we were standing up for. And we talked about what this place means to them. The water was glass, there was a slight fog, and the birds were calling off into the distance. We talked about favorite spots, funny memories, and how unique and special the chain of lakes are. It brings people together in a positive, healthy way. And we feel the more people get out and experience those things, the more they'll care and do their part to protect it. Video vlog. Um, you know, we just were paddling for a couple hours. We had some kayakers join us for the last leg, so that was pretty fun. I think there was about five of them. Eating some pizza. Like always, horizontal, Jeff Guy. Man, this is our second break of the day. Can't use anything vertical. God dang, all right. <clears throat> Refilm. Re we just paddled through Wilson's Lake, eating some pizza, got yelled at by Corey. <laughs> Dang it, we are now filming. <laughs> eating some pizza. Oh, look at that. We have Grant. What are you eating, Grant? Um, either a pear or pizza. I don't Nobody know. Nobody cares. <laughs> no spiders on that one. It was very calm, just a beautiful morning. The sun was coming out. And really, the, the only thing we had to worry about was you know, getting some weed stuck on our fins. Besides that, it was just awesome. We're on Hanley Lake. Is that how you say it? Hanley? Hanley Lake, almost to Central Lake. Boom. As we approached Central Lake, and it was back to just the five of us, we were heading under the bridge into Intermediate Lake, which is the largest of the upper chain. The temp was starting to rise and the spirits were still super high. This is where we actually had more people join us, including a few students from Elk Rapids. One of our main goals is to inspire future generations and having them join us for a large chunk of the upper chain was super humbling to us. Intermediate Lake, still doing well. Heading to Bel Air into the river into Bel Air and Joe Short said we need to go around this dam but there'll be some small rapids but it'll be okay. So we went around the dam put our, uh, our paddle boards back in and we're going along in the rapids all of a sudden we come around the curve and there's a tree down blocking the river. I don't know. And Joe Lorenz hits it, and we just had a, a log jam. We jumped off our boards, and we were trying to get, get through it. I got pinned up against a tree with my board, and I yelled, I'm pinned, I'm pinned but there was nothing anybody could do. I had to just muster some strength and push the board away. And uh, fortunately, nobody got hurt. Joe's board had some damage, mine had a hole in it. Um, so we took a few minutes to uh, to regroup there in Bel Air. Does anybody see my paddle? Oh, yeah. Nice grab, Joe.
After our unexpected river adventure, we approached Bel Air and the upper chain was now complete. We had more people join in, which was a nice distraction with new conversation and energy. This was almost like a reset button. We were about to hit the open water part of the paddle, and of course the wind started to pick up. At this point, our spirits were high, and we had a perfect summer day. One of the areas we were most excited for was the Grass River. We had never paddled this section and it did not disappoint. We had this caravan of paddlers that resembled what the first explorers would have felt and seen. Small settlements enclosed by nature, a reminder that water brings people together with a sense of history and a need to protect this unspoiled landscape. The Grass River consists of crystal clear water winding through pristine northern Michigan beauty. Grasses, pines, lily pads, truly one of the gems protected by the natural area. Okay, paddles off guys! Enter Torch Lake. Made it to Torch Lake! Woo! Fortunately on Torch, the wind and the waves were, were helping us because they were pretty strong but they sort of pushed us and we made good, made up some time there. We got down to the sandbar. Of course, there was a log jam of boats trying to get in the river. So we had a, uh, a police boat kind of direct traffic yeah. and get us through. These paddle boards. I'm gonna let these paddle boards get through there, okay? Right now. Stand by. All right, paddle boards. Hey, let me get that guy out. As we went under the bridge, people were spraying us and saying hello. And although it is one of the most beautiful places to paddle, and at certain times, it's one of our favorites, we were actually excited to get through the chaos. We were also kind of living in the moment because we had current, the wind was blocked, and we knew when we hit Skigmog and Elk Lake that there was gonna be some high winds and waves at our face. Growing up near the chain of lakes my entire life, you're drawn to them. You know, I was on Skigmog, Elk, and Torch from before I can remember. And so it's a part of you. And being able to do something meaningful with the people that you grew up with and in a town, ending in a town that I grew up in, that I teach in, that I live here. It's amazing to do a paddle where it's 
physically and mentally tough. And then you add the raising awareness and showing people what it looks like with the film, documentary, and social media. I don't know if there's a better feeling of pushing yourself that much and then having that much reward at the end. got some headwind and some chop, but we're making do. Oak Lake, last stretch. We are making our way. Last chunk, here we go. You know you can quit at any time, but you don't. And you can just go paddle parts of the lake. But to do something that tough and that challenging and to stand up for something you believe in is so worth it, and it always is. That's why we keep doing it. People along the bank screaming, stand up for Great Lakes, and thank you, and cheering us on, was the best ending to a paddle or to any event that I've ever been a part of and I almost couldn't even like I was just living in the moment and just seeing all that it was so surreal the sun had just gone down coming into my hometown Words can't describe how we're feeling, but I think the best way to say it would be looking at Grant's face. You know, he this is the first adventure he had been on. And I look over and he's got a smile on his face and he's like, man, I love this. something meaningful and a small way to make a difference in the place that you love and you know I say I'll say it again stand up for Great Lakes it's not just the Great Lakes it's all Great Lakes and we just paddled 14 Great Lakes and ended at one of the Great Lakes Lake Michigan story over.